Welcome, this is Dr. Mobeen Sayed with one more episode of Long Story Short with Dr. Bean from the FLCCC platform. The discussion today is the methylene blue dosage and especially for neuroprotection and for brain fog and memory related issues. So let's start our discussion. First of all, this is the FLCCC site. So you can go to flccc.net or you can go to covid19criticalcare.com and you would see this site. In addition to that, there are some studies that I have here. For example, this is a study, Neurometabolic Mechanisms for Memory Enhancement and Neuroprotection of Methylene Blue. Then there is another study over here. This is a study I discussed last week protection against neurodegeneration with low-dose methylene blue and near-infrared light. And then there are some more studies here as well. In addition to the studies, I have linked these three sites so that you can look at the methylene blue recommendation or indication, side effects, the allergic reactions, if any, contraindications, and so on. So we will discuss those all now. So, highlights are, methylene blue is on WHO's list of essential medicines with high safety profile. It is a hermetic drug. What that means is that this drug in low dose has an opposite effect of the same drug in high dose. So, such this mechanism is called hermosis and this is a hermetic drug. So, for here is the dose. I'm going to tell you the dose and then throughout the rest of the discussion, I will show you the backing evidence. So the dose for neuroprotection and for memory protection is from 0.5 to 4 milligram per kilogram body weight in one day. Usually can be given orally but also given IV over 15-30 minutes. Now the toxic effects can appear when the dose is increased beyond 5 milligram per kilogram body weight. That is why it is very important to make sure that the correct dose is administered. I would lean towards a smaller doses. So for example, 0 0.5 or 1 milligram per kilogram seems to be decent enough dose that I'm seeing in multiple studies. Now remember, methylene blue is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Monoamine oxidase is an enzyme. And because of this behavior, it can cause serious side effects if it is administered intravenously while the patient is also on selective serotonin uptake inhibitors. So that's a contraindication. Similarly, patients or individuals with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase or G6PD deficiency should not be given methylene blue because it can cause hemolysis in them. And usually that hemolysis occurs the next day. So they don't even know today and the next day hemolysis can occur. Methylene blue is also a known teratogenic drug. That is, it will harm the fetus developing in mother. So it should never be given to someone who is pregnant, to pregnant mothers. So these are the highlights of the discussion. Now I'm going to show you various evidences and various studies in which these dosages have been discussed. So let's start from here. This is the study that says neurometabolic mechanisms for memory enhancement and neuroprotection of methylene blue. So before I actually go over this mechanism itself, I want to show you the study. And a couple of things here. The study itself is talking about that low dose methylene blue is neuroprotective and it helps with the mitochondrial dysfunction. It is an auto-oxidizing drug. That means, as we discussed last time as well, methylene blue can donate an electron and can receive an electron. So because of that behavior of auto-oxidation and then donating electrons to the electron transport chain, it can really help a dysfunctioning mitochondria. So in addition, low doses of methylene blue have also been used for neuroprotection against mitochondrial dysfunction in humans and experimental models of disease. The unique auto-oxidizing property of methylene blue and its pleiotropic effect on a number of tissue oxidases explain its potent neuroprotective effect at low doses. So I want to 
quickly show you a couple of diagrams on this paper. First one is this one. This is the hermosis or hormesis effect. So what happens is here the x-axis is the dose of the drug and the y-axis is the effect of the drug. So as you see that as we start increasing the dose, the biological effect continues to go up. And then at some point, at some dose, the biological effect now starts reversing and starts going down. And at certain dose, it actually becomes negative. So this is the phenomena of hormesis in drugs. At lower dose, it is beneficial. And as the dose is increased, it is harmful. Now for methylene blue, the question of why does it do that? There is a hypothesis that it is because of its function with the electron transport chain and as it can modulate that chain in higher doses, that modulation or that impact on the electron transport chain is big enough that it actually becomes a negative outcome. There is another theory and that is methylene blue is never free of contamination. And in lower doses, those contaminants have very less effect, negligible effect. But as the doses increase, those contaminants start accumulating and can become toxic or can become part of the toxicity. So, of course, one toxicity is its effect on the mitochondria in larger doses is negative and then contaminants as well. So, if you see here, I'm going to read this. It's in the presentation afterwards. I want to show you one more thing. So, here, if you see the table one, in this table, it might look small and it's okay, I don't mean you to read it, but what it is, is in this table, they're talking about various neuroprotective effects and the dosages of the methylene blue and various studies. So if you see here, for example, inhibitory avoidance, behavioral change, and they gave in this study, it's an old study, 1978, and I'll show you studies that are more recent as well. So single intraperitoneal drug administration of 0.05 milligram per kilogram or 0.5 or 1 or 5 or 50. And they saw enhancement of avoidance memory at 1 milligram per kilogram. So if you see here one more, object recognition, so brain fog, single intraperitoneal 1, 4 and 10 milligram per kilogram. And if you see here, improved object recognition at 4 milligram per kilogram dose. So from 0.5 milligram to 4 milligram per kilogram is the dose that you would see most successful in these studies. And let me just show you this as well, that if you look at methylene blue's indication for methemoglobin, in that case, the dose is adult dosage, 1 milligram per kilogram IV over 5 to 30 minutes. And if met hemoglobin level remains over 30%, or if clinical symptoms persist, repeat dose up to 1 milligram per kilogram one hour after the first dose. The point is not to say that we should be treating hemoglobin as part of brain fog, but the point is what is the safety range? And you're seeing that over here. Similarly, if you see down here, pediatric dosage, 1 milligram per kilogram IV over 5 to 30 minutes. So I want to go back to this study and want to share some excerpts from this. So they say, to review by Oz et al, described the review, described general physiochemical features and actions of methylene blue in multiple cellular and molecular targets in the nervous system, including the CGMP pathway. But it is misleading to generally refer to methylene blue effects without mentioning dose because methylene blue has a hormetic dose response. So they're saying that if we just say take methylene blue, that can be misleading because in higher doses it can be toxic and in lower doses it is beneficial. So with opposite effects at high and low doses. For example, high intravenous dose of methylene blue causes methemoglobin, whereas low dose methylene blue is treatment of choice for methemoglobin. Then they also say in the same study, it is also important to note that adverse effects of methylene blue are not explained solely on the basis of hormesis or oxidative damage, as I discussed before with the mitochondria, but also on that of its chemical purity. Even pharmaceutical grade methylene blue contains impurities such as arsenic, aluminum, cadmium, mercury, and lead. 
at low doses the presence of contaminants is not of great concern but at higher doses non specific effects due to accumulation of various toxic and bioactive substances are possible and then they say this is actually a very important thing to note industrial grade and chemical grade methylene blue that is commercially available methylene blue for commercial products sold as a dye or stain can consist of more than 8% or 11% of various contaminants and should not be administered to humans or animals so this is a very if you take one thing away please don't buy methylene blue off the shelf for dye or stain and try to use that that will be really harmful now this study i actually discussed this study last week the mechanism that they present here today i just wanted to show one excerpt from the study and that is the dose so this is a 2015 published study and here they talk about but systemic low doses and look at the dose 0.5 to 4 mg per kg of methylene blue that stimulate mitochondrial respiration in vivo are safe and effective in both animals and humans and they cite rojas a all and that is a study i was just discussing with you before then here is one more a two year double blind crossover trial of the prophylactic effect of methylene blue in manic depressive psychosis so if you see here this is 1986 but the point here is that they used methylene blue for two years in patients who that had manic depressive psychosis of course if they had the side effects they would have withdrawn it very fast so if you see here a two year prophylactic trial was carried out in 31 bipolar manic depressive subjects comparing 300 mg per day methylene blue so 300 if let's say for an average somebody is 70 kg then look at the dose this is 300 mg per day methylene blue on a double blind crossover basis with 15 mg per day so they had one that group that was getting 15 mg and the other that was getting 300 17 patients completed the two year trial during the year the patients were treated with methylene blue at 300 mg per day and then the other one was 15 mg per day so this is another study that shows human usage of methylene blue for neurological outcomes so if you see here the results suggest that methylene blue may be useful addition to lithium in the long term treatment of manic depressive psychosis and warrant further investigation then here is one more document which i think is very important this is the alzheimer's drug discovery foundation and this is their publication in 2018 where they talk about methylene blue So if you see once again it looks like a eye chart so I'm going to actually bring up the original paper to show it to you. So here is the original paper. So methylene blue and trial this. So here is the summary from this trial. This trial was done for Alzheimer's patient and the effect of methylene blue in their improvement. So neuroprotective benefit phase 2 trials of methylene blue showed some promise as a monotherapy phase 3 trials of the trial 0 to 37 in alzheimer's patients show no evidence of efficacy as an add on but possibly beneficial as a monotherapy then age and related health concern no evidence that it is beneficial then methylene blue extends maximum lifespan in female genetically heterogeneous mice safety low dose methylene blue has a good safety profile However higher doses come with side effects such as anemia and serotonin toxicity and you have the link to this document and then they go over various parts of the trial look at the low dose here 200 mg or about 4 mg per kg then another rct examined the effect of low dose methylene blue 260 mg or 4 mg per kg per day so these are the kind of dosages that you would see here then these are the sites where the drug related information is present as i showed you there is this site rx list with methylene blue iv then drugs.com iv and then here medicine net has oral methylene blue and its effects so let's just quickly look at those and we will be good after that so this is the methylene blue for met hemoglobin i went over this before just make sure that you give a look at what are the possible side effects 
what are serious side effects, and then the contraindications. I have gone over those. Most important are if somebody is taking selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or if somebody has G6PD deficiency, or mothers who are pregnant, they should never take methylene blue. Then here is another methylene blue side effects, and there is a list here of the side effects. And finally, this is the oral methylene blue, normally used as a weak antiseptic for UTI type infections. So generic name methylene blue, and if you see here, this medication is a weak antiseptic that kills bacteria in the urinary tract. It is also a blue-green dye and is used for certain medical tests because it will stain some body fluids and tissues. And we have been doing that in our medical <laughs> labs when we were becoming doctors. So here are the references. These references will be separately posted as well. And that is the discussion for today. What is the takeaway? The takeaway for me was 0.5 to 4 milligram per kilogram body weight daily can be given chronically for a longer period of time. However, I felt that most of the studies had, and even the hemoglobin management, one milligram per kilogram of body weight has been used more often. So with this, thank you very much, and I would see you again.